Thank you, Anand, for kind words and introduction of me. I uh, welcome all friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, respectively, to all of you. And um, today, uh, as Anand rightly mentioned, as part of the start of such a webinar series, the core the subject that we are going to discuss is a privacy and definitely the next logical step for the privacy is personal data protection, right? So once again, welcome all of you. Uh, definitely towards the end of uh, my uh, thought, there will be a question and answer session. So uh, you can ask questions, then we will be having, uh, I will try my level best to answer them. So let us start uh, with the agenda for this uh, session. As we clearly see, we will have a overview of what exactly privacy is, uh, what are regulations around the privacy and around the world for the subject, major components of privacy and introduction to few of our couple of courses that is the last part and then we will get into the Q&A part of it. So, a privacy is a legacy. So, if we consider from inception of a mankind as man, I mean, when I say man, it's a human, human start getting socialized, definitely need of privacy is also is there, right? But in modern times, if we consider, so actually I searched through a little bit of a history, but how this modern time privacy get into a picture. So for that purpose, we have to start from 1891. Two gentlemen from USA, they are and they were lawyers. So Samuel and Louis. Right. So first in one of their famous articles, they describe right to privacy and what they say that it is a right to be let alone. So, when I say, when, when I need to be alone, when I am socialized, I am uh, dealing with many humans, any other means, either by my uh, means, electronic means or so, or just I go and uh, I meet them up, all the socializing, but then, Equally, there is a need to let me be alone, maybe whatever the reason would be, but that is my right. And precisely, these things were mentioned in detail by these two lawyers back in 1891. That would be the first starting point when privacy is getting into my, uh, uh, the legal framework specifically. Further, in 1967, it is a more concrete step towards the definition, towards the uh, having more clarity, crystallization of the concept of a privacy, where Alan, Alan Weston, so one of in his publications, he mentioned a tangible definition about the privacy. So, privacy is a claim for individual group or institution. Importantly, now it is not only about the human, but now it is about the institutions as well, which determine for themselves when, how, and to what extent information uh, about them is communicated to others. Now, when we move further, same with the, uh, I would say, definition that is largely framing up. So, what to do for the protection? I mean, one can understand that privacy is important, but then how to protect it? So, there are certain measures or measures of a control that people have over access to their personal information. So, there are certain rights when I approach any organization when I approach for any, I mean, organization can be social organization, corporate organization, group of people, whatever. And currently, it is more towards natural person. 
So there would be uh, questions that, okay, uh, we will see further in a consequent slides that what is that private data or if you call it as a personal data, if you would call it as a personally identifiable information. That is the core for all these discussions that we are having. So this is a little bit background, history, historical milestone about overall privacy. That major breakthrough that we can find in laws or regulations for GDPR further. And it started the uh, discussion about what exactly on which principle these privacy protection of uh, information related to private information or personally identifiable information would get engaged. So here uh, on your screen frame, there would be few common principles. Definitely we will have deep dive in what principles are etc. There are various approaches. Every regulation has to come up with certain guidelines about a uh, principle. So I also uh, got into a picture with uh, identified certain principles. Number may vary, standard wise, regulation wise, etc. But core principle, common principle, uh, we cannot escape from that. First of all, if we see the notice. Before uh, getting engaged into the common principle, just I would like to provide you the regular transaction of our information that we have. So, for example, today I want to open a bank account, very day-to-day uh, -day example I would like to quote. So, I will go to bank or nowadays bank is coming to me. I will have to fill a couple of forms. I will have to provide certain my information as an individual. I have to hand over certain documents, either digital or uh, by hand on the physical copies of my uh, few documents. They will process and they will say, okay, from today your bank account may be saving for whatever current account is open. Now, this is a transaction, right? I am the person who wants to have one account with the bank for that purpose, there is certain process of a bank that I have to follow. However, whatever information I am handing over to bank in form of that filling certain forms or handing over certain documents digitally or physically and so on, so I am giving certain information. And in that information, then the privacy, personally identifiable information that will get engaged, like my social security number, driving license maybe, some identity proof, maybe some my uh, earlier bank statement uh, just to confirm whether uh, I'm having a good standing with other banks, if at all I'm having and all. So, which are related to me being a natural person, right? Now, I have certain rights over that. We call it as a data subject, right? Or personally uh, uh, identifiable information around that. So, which is very much important for me. It may provide that who am I, what I am doing, etc. Because due to the explosion in the uh, information technology. We are in IT uh, century now, right? So, and if we consider all these are, we have various social platforms, we have uh, various now, the IoT is coming, new digital economy, which is more dynamic, uh, structured, unstructured data, access to data and all the things, because data is, say now, an important aspect. So, in future or in near future or even today, there can be not only information security related issues, if that information is used wrongly, that personally identifiable information used wrongly, there could be a consequences which can directly come to me as such, because I own Say my financial stature, I have 
a certain my safety i have my certain medical related report all these are a personally identifiable information out of that few would be a sensitive information from my perspective and we have to guard it we have to guard it because we have to guard the interest of individual and for that purpose the common principles on which every organization now just i'm giving you a future linking whether that organization is controlled or that organization is a processor right uh, these two words we have to keep it in mind consequence wise we can discuss about that however so the notice so advising users visitors readers users for policies uh, in place to protect personal information so every website every organization now deals you can find there is a privacy policy everywhere even uh, when we accept uh, the cookies structure uh, on website and all so they provide a certain notice that okay this particular data is getting used for certain uh, my uh, purpose of the business which is important aspect and other than the purpose of my business there can be these three four things so this is kind of letting people know that how and what type of data we are gathering and how we want to move it we would process it and so on for that purpose choice and consent is one more common principle that is the power at hand of a data subject or the holder of personally identifiable information so i would decide that okay whether i have to accept this or no whether all this can uh, say purpose the cookies would sit in my browser and they will gather the data whether i agree to it or not do i want to have certain modification in that this is nothing but my choice and consent how my personal information would be used by the organization where either i am registering or i am looking at the website or i am using certain application or i am getting engaged uh, with the business for them then access and the participation now for example i would say that i have opened account with the bank i have handed over my personal information with them for example my home address and say after one year or so still account is continuing that i changed to my home so i changed my city or something like that but still i am having a relationship with that bank so i must have access and i must have authority to change my address which is obvious which is the requirement from the business perspective as well but it is mean uh, the i would say not weapon per se but right uh, with the data subject that they can change their personal identifiable information so i can participate i can have certain security uh, protocols i can decide up to what level my data should be uh, shown to non authorized people etc etc i mean all of us we know the privacy it's a subject in itself so we we are having just uh, overview at this moment then integrity and security so whatever data i am handing over to the bank bank should be in complete control of that data from the security integrity confidentiality perspective throughout the data life cycle so data is uh, collected moved stored transmitted then uh, processed add edit delete at every data life cycle phase this data should be guarded for security integrity and uh, availability perspective cia a regular try and from that perspective we have to consider uh, this principle and last one is the enforcement importantly ensuring that the service by solution uh, uh, its uh, platform etc so certain regulations now here the entry of regulators come into the picture which is important common principles from the privacy perspective right 
So these are certain principles and we will capitalize slowly that uh, going a little bit deep dive uh, with this principle. Right. So regulation. So where we started here, uh, there are around 120 countries. This list that you are seeing, it is not exhaustive. It is just a representative, illustrative list. And this list is covering major economies. For example, E. They have come up with GDPR, well known. Everybody knows about it. But what exactly it is, uh, or every regulation, what exactly that wants, that I will unfold in consequence. Like then, CCPA is there. The, in China, there is a DSL and PIPL in uh, Saudi Arabia, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, there is a PDPL which is under draft, yet it is uh, to be enforced. And uh, in India, there is one section in IT Act, section 42, uh, 43, sorry. And by the way, in India as well, there is one more specific uh, Personal Data Protection Act that is on the verge to get enacted and all. Maybe uh, some delay is expected. However, in time work, is moving towards having some or other regulation around privacy because it is made of the hour. If you want to be in the business, and all this is a sustainability part, conformance part, uh, it is more towards the compliance part. It is not about the uh, performance of organization. Heavy penalties are there. And Every day we might be knowing various uh, news that say Facebook has to pay some penalty, Google has to pay some penalty and so on. There are many. Why privacy is getting more and more concern to the organization? Because of its teeth of the law. Right? So, in normal sense, what exactly um, uh, the regulators want from this privacy related practice. So these privacy related practices which we need is a privacy by design. Now this is one of the important aspect component for every privacy related implementation program or so that we know that control designs and all. So whenever there are control we define for the security, for quality, for any other aspect of that business process or technological process, if that technological process information asset is part of that privacy scope, uh, how we will get uh, that privacy scope that we would discuss at a, a, a higher level definitely. So this privacy by design, it should be part of my control design, how I would deal with this data which is involved in this process as a uh, personally identifiable data. For example, same uh, example as will uh, get it through that uh, I have certain transactions with the bank while opening the savings account. There are certain IT processes involved, there will be certain business process involved and how I will guard that collected personal identifiable information, that thought is nothing but the privacy by design. How I am uh, designing the software to collect the data, how I am designing the business process by collecting the data, how, how I will store the physical documents, I will store the data. Uh, how I will uh, have a certain control for confidentiality of this data, etc., etc. All these thoughts are behind this privacy by design and further privacy by default. So, in, in a, it is not part of uh, this presentation, but it is a next logical step once I consider the privacy by design. Next, if I consider uh, that is a mandatory breach notification. Every law, every regulation has certain stringent part around it. So, okay, everything that I am uh, doing for the protection of personally identifiable information, but 
we cannot uh, escape the route that nothing will happen to it. Somewhere, some incident will expose that data. We call it as a breach. So within how much time that breach notification should be there, etc., etc. There will be a certain penalty if we don't follow that breach notification uh, mandate. So, for example, in GDPR, they say that uh, within 72 hours of uh, knowing that a breach has happened, we must convey that breach notification to respective parties, interested parties, including regulators, press release, etc., etc. There are many further uh, layers to it, but that is one of the regulations that we can find. And we have to design and develop our overall privacy management by considering these particular points. Now, next is expanded individual rights. This is supported by regulation. We discussed about I have right to update, I have right to uh, uh, certain uh, have access to it. I have right to say that okay, don't keep my data now, delete it. It would be the uh, principle that one, uh, you end up the relationship with that customer, don't keep that data unless and until some uh, data retention related regulations are there that uh, we can have that data somewhere archived that in my current production uh, system that data should not reflect by any means, something like that. So, and this is a right of data subject or individual who has provided uh, his or her data with the organization. This is supported by it. At every compliance breach of such a right or principle that we have uh, considering, there is a point and imprisonment. When I talk about these laws are having fit, here is the crux. For example, in GDPR, minimum fine is 10 million euros or 2% of turnover of the organization, whichever is higher, right? So, this is what, and this is the minimum, maximum is 4% of turnover or 20 million euros, whichever is higher. Whichever is higher, that is the crux of it. Uh, in some regulations, there is a provision for imprisonment for the accountable parties as well. And from all this perspective, the privacy becomes very, very niche and very, very important aspect moving further. Yes, we can consider now we are talking about digital economy and digital economy technologies, business enablers and business models which are very fast, uh, which are very volatile at times, uh, which have high end technologies nowadays we are talking about say uh, 5G, cloud and uh, uh, blockchain etc etc, everywhere there is a data. Every device is getting smart, it is collecting, it is storing certain amount of data and so on. So the overall landscape or the canvas for the privacy is increasing at the speed that technology is getting advanced. And from that perspective, privacy is the key uh, we have to guard in future. So if we consider uh, ISO 27001 which is getting with the new version, they have specifically included uh, uh, the privacy related controls additionally and so on, right? So, I will link this back further in my consequent slide. However, uh, the regulators want further to explicit and repressible consent. Now, we discuss about consent, more precise, uh, more stringent consent taking, now whose accountability of that etc etc that will be the part of overall privacy management uh, system per se or privacy implementation control implementation and part of it accountability definitely appointing a data protection officer and that is not a role it is an organization right so governance of it operations of it and management of overall organization wide who will be the accountable for that all that discussions are coming in the regulations. There are various articles. So, for example, if we consider GDPR, 
there are 11 chapters and 91 different articles and all these articles are meant for these different expectations how organization should behave a uh, few articles are for the principle few articles are for a consent and so on so all these 91 articles they cover all these uh, privacy related aspects and this is one of the important milestone i i have been talking about the data protection office overall accountability and all would be fixed so now there is inter uh, jurisdiction that is an important aspect today world is so close so jurisdiction and stepping over the jurisdiction or uh, the transmission beyond the country's jurisdiction that is the main i want to pen point the main concern and for that purpose how regulations come up with that so when we do the deep dive in all these points we will consider in uh, more detail about how to control them what are uh, the controls not only the corruption but backup or disaster recovery site of uh, organization it may happen that okay my uh, disaster recovery site is somewhere in some other jurisdiction but i don't have any business over there but still from the scoping perspective i need to consider from privacy uh, the law of the land and the regulation perspective so they must they need to have certain controls over there so this was a quick review of what regulators would consider and so on what i have done that there are certain components for privacy protection perspective these four components i have uh, actually identified one is a generalized component at the below circle you can see but the major points are rights standard and the principle out of that rights and principle are core components for any uh, privacy protection perspective we consider standards are built and regulations are also built based on these principle and rights and other components which are uh, contributing uh, towards overall privacy how we can consider so for example if we can uh, consider a, a little bit of the discussion already we had but just to illustrate further so there are data subject rights to be informed to obtain copy right to delete right to modify all these are rights are given to data subject or privacy uh, information hold so if there is any change in the business uh, processing so that change which is impacting the collected uh personally identifiable information needs to be informed back and there are many by the way this is not a exhaustive list it can't be uh it is a huge list in a way it is just a representative list uh to obtain a copy whenever i need and must have access to my uh my personally uh, identifiable information uh i have a right to delete right to be forgotten as well it is uh, mentioned somewhere so what is that if i end up my relationship with that xyz bank for example so it is my right that i must get a notification that okay all your data which was with us is completely deleted from all the respective information assets including temporary file in iso 27701 there is a specific control that how to deal with a temporary file so i will have to because being a bank i may not process entire data on my own i might have hired certain outsourcing uh, companies my partners or uh, all, all that uh, relationship then i have to notify them okay you have to delete these particular data so first of all i must have system to identify that what private sleep uh, or private data or personally identifiable information i possess so there are various tools uh, which actually crawl across the system 
they gather that information, then uh, respective teams will delete that data and so on. So, even though I say in a one line right to delete, however, it will take a major initiative in background. My, uh, whenever a person is removed from my system, so it means what? That process needs to be designed accordingly, where the principle that we saw privacy by design will come into the picture. I cannot say that, okay, now data is with us and I don't have any technology to build it. In university system, that has been the major problem, right? And data protection officers nowadays have to deal with it somehow. Or otherwise, we have to change the tool, which is not providing me this facility and so on. All these things are going here while designing the future system or updating current system, privacy by design, right? So, all are entangled in a way. Uh, next, if I consider, uh, sorry, I will take you to the next important part, which is a principle. So, we have been discussing about various principles. So, transparency is there, choice and consent, limiting data collection, access to data, data quality. So, in GDPR, there are seven different principles. In ISO 27701, there are 11. To be precise, it is ISO 29100. There are around 11 such principles. Every regulation is coming up with the list, but common principle would be there. The data security, accountability, how to monitor and comply. So, entire my privacy management system, if I consider our uh, information system, that would be based on such a principle. So, if I have a bigger canvas in background, at one end there are certain regulations, there are rights from the data subject and third thing was that they are the principle. So, being a data protection officer or say whatever the accountable person for overall privacy engagement, I have to achieve, I have to adhere all expectations from these different three buckets. And this particular, and this is all about how my privacy talks about. As I mentioned, I have been mentioning from uh, standards, ISO standards perspective, definitely I have not mentioned uh, frameworks like NIST and so on. However, 27701, 29100 and, and background 27001, that is the information security management standards. These are very key standards from uh, privacy protection perspective or we generally call it as a PIMS. So, uh, Privacy Information Management System. So, 29.100 actually provides uh, the principal discussion as well as framework. We will discuss when we talk more about the component of it, right? So, uh, these particular thing that uh, we have to consider. Now, let us come to the component, actor. Personal data, data protection officer, consent, data breach. Why I have specifically mentioned this over here, even if you can say certain overlap. So, the framework, how it works, that first we have to identify actor who is a data subject, who is a controller. Controller means the person or the organization uh, or the entity who process that data and takes ownership of data for their legitimate business purpose. So, bank is a controller to whom I am handing over my data to open the saving bank account. Now, if bank is outsourcing their certain IT related uh, uh, proceedings to some other company, that company becomes a processor, right? So, these are actors who is giving data to whom for what purpose, that data flow mapping we need to do and all this is given in ISO 29.100, by the way, it is not uh, auditable standard. However, it is very important uh, standard as a base. It is a guideline standard. Then uh, we have to identify that whatever the data is getting exchanged, what uh, the personally 
identified by data register and once that data is identified then how to protect it what are the requirements to protect it what are the principles what regulations are saying about that etc etc and for that purpose there are certain compliances rights of the holder of the data all these things would work in the background to define and so we call it as a personally the I mean, privacy impact assessment or from security perspective there will be a risk assessment specifically for personal data which is part of personal data uh, uh, i would say impact analysis so we will consider that where data is getting originated jurisdiction related aspect what is exactly risk around that so what could be the control and 27701 specifically comes from uh, that idea that how to control from controller has uh, certain controls processors are having also certain control all these are based on 27001 one more important aspect with the gdpr all the 91 different articles are clearly mapped with 27701 that is the pms there is a clear mapping within standard it is given uh, that how one control is mapped with different articles from gdpr and it is an official so uh, if we uh, study that in comparison definitely we come to know that what uh, gdpr is and frankly speaking so far as i have seen so far as my limited understanding is all the uh, other laws regulation for the privacy are 80 90% are based on the gdpr yes there may be a difference in between the number of uh, penalty or the number of imprisonment or whether there is imprisonment or not etc only that differs otherwise this principle right of subject uh, or uh, uh, the other principle those are common same similar i would say and they will actually provide us a overall idea how about my uh, Uh, overall privacy related aspects are. and by having said that now what we are uh, doing as a knowledgeon we are coming up with uh, sources for gdpr one is the executive management just for us of overview why and what mainly if we are eligible for that and so on and there would be a deep dive one day entire awareness generally it is for middle management i would say from the gdpr uh, compliance and other perspective and in addition to that we have awareness program for 27701 uh, for the awareness i mean we will cover highlights from 29100 as well as a detailed uh, standard overview for uh, 27701 where uh, the pia and all other parts uh, would be covered at very high level it is basically about the awareness and maybe uh, this is what i wanted to check okay uh, i think i am on time i have to rest my case over here friends so uh, uh, now we are moving to the if there are any questions and answer sessions that we can move to us thank you Thank you, Manda. Uh, so, if anybody has any questions, you can post in the chat box or uh, in the uh, Q and A section. We already have one question here, Manda. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, in the Q and A. Uh, what is that? What? Uh, can you please hear uh, this? Check if you can see this question. What can be done when the site app gives terms and conditions in a very small font, or given in such a way that users should not read it thoroughly? Okay. No, then it's our responsibility to go through it. And otherwise, till the time, let us not use that website 
yes this is a genuine i would say a practical thing but nowadays uh, that is also one important part and one more uh, aspect to that uh, as per the regulations or the principle uh, i can go back and change my privacy related uh, choices or consent that i have provided i can change that any given point of time however whenever the data that is getting collected now they would talk about cookies from the other side or they must have their own privacy policy what type of a data they would gather for what purpose all the things uh, we need to read and one more important aspect i would like to even though font is uh, small and uh, there is much more information than required is provided if we understand that what exactly they are saying then we can have the focus reading and then we can uh, come up with but uh, frankly speaking we cannot escape by this we have to go through it and uh, because finally it is related with our data right, right. so we must be updated on that right yes any other questions so if anybody has any questions okay i think uh, we are uh, done with the questions there are no more questions i believe okay okay fine so i i just have a small question uh briefly uh, and then answer and that is what would be the recourse for an individual we, we have been talking about the organization part for the organization okay. uh but is there any recourse for an individual in in different countries if it the organization doesn't comply with that is there any recourse for an individual can the individual do something and the, the employee of that organization you are saying or no, i'm saying the data subject okay data subject no uh, there are certain rights and that we have to observe uh, mm -hmm. that is the only expectation from uh, the uh, law per se mm -hmm. uh, because the accountability to maintain uh, the entire this privacy related aspect is with controller who is collecting the data okay so there is nothing data subject can do per se uh no at least i have not seen or come to uh, okay. requirement oh, fine and one more point uh, just if uh, you permit me for two minutes i would like to mention that uh, see uh, we discussed a lot till now uh, because i specifically have uh, two minutes from that that what individual who want to pursue the career or towards the privacy right mm -hmm. we discuss about the importance of privacy privacy management and data protection etc etc but what individuals can choose there are a big demand definitely dp uh, oh that is a data protection officer is at very strategic level law with all the things but there are things which talk about implementation of the privacy related aspect uh there are uh, certain uh, courses specifically towards management of uh, this privacy uh iatp and all of the many lawyers who are actually practicing into a cyber security space uh, they are now taking more seriously this privacy space so if all people who might have be having the understanding how soft certain oxley act investor protection act change the entire world now the same thing is done by gdpr across the world now we can consider 120 countries are passing the laws for privacy specifically lot of work is there but importantly the base of information security that is well compass i mean without understanding of information security directly jumping to privacy that uh, might be more from management perspective it is okay that from implementation of these controls uh, this uh, would be required and further 
And now we have, um, let's say, chief risk officer, CISO, and all those things. Equally, there is a weightage for a, a data officer as well, for the data owners. So all these are coming together to create this ecosystem, which is finally getting ended towards the privacy compliance or privacy uh, uh, related projects. So uh, this is what I would like to say. There is lots and lots of possibilities are getting generated and lots and lots of various um, opportunities are also getting generated in this space. Okay. So we have another question here. Is there any courses on DSCI certification? Like this? Uh, at this moment, uh, we don't have. I mean, from the Nolakon perspective or? In general, I think. Any courses okay. on DSCI? No, uh, I at least I don't have um, understanding of this DSCI. Okay. Okay. I think we have answered the question. Uh, now, thank you everybody uh, for uh, joining this on a Saturday. And have a great day. You can always reach out to us. If you have any more questions, queries, anything regarding this. Okay. Thank you, Munda. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, friends, for patient listening and invested the time in this. Great time ahead. Thank you very much.